everyone, it's Lizzie from Wonderful World here and I've decided to start a YouTube series that answers some of your questions about freelancing, the freelance lifestyle and travel in general. I get a lot of emails from people each week who are interested in becoming a freelance writer so I thought I'd start this series to kind of offer pockets of information um, in short sharp bursts. So today I want to start the series by talking about um, the steps you can take to become freelance. Uh, these things are some of the things I did when I took the dive seven months ago, but they're also some things that I wish I'd done at the time. The first thing I would suggest is to have some savings or some m money put away somewhere, just in case you don't earn enough money in the first few months, which, let's face it, is, is quite likely. I had two to three months worth of uh, income saved up before I went freelance. Uh, just so I could still pay the bills and still go out and see people and not become a hermit. The next thing I would suggest is to uh, find out about taxes and legal stuff where you live. For me in the UK, I just had to call up the HMRC, fill out a form, and now I just have to do my own taxes every April. Really, really easy, but something that you really, really need to consider doing if you're going freelance. You don't want to kind of get off on a great start and then a few months down the line have... Um, have the tax people get in touch with you, uh, not the best thing. Um, then I would suggest sitting down and figuring out your, your long-term goals. Freelancing is notorious for being directionless, so I think it's really, really important to sit down with a notebook or a colleague and figure out your end goal, where you want to end up, where you want to be in five years, in 10 years, in 20 years, even in the next six months, so you can see your progress, you can track it, and give yourself that motivation to get to where you want to be eventually. Then I would suggest setting up a, a portfolio website or a blog. I have a portfolio website where I put clippings of my work for clients to see, uh, I list my services, and I, I list the clients that I've worked with before. Um, I also have Wonderful World where I blog about travel and lifestyle related stuff so clients can get a sense of my style of writing and can see that I can build a community uh, with content. Finally, um, I'd suggest lining up maybe one or two clients before you take the dive. I found one client that I'm actually still working with now in the month before I went freelance. Um, I actually found them on Craigslist. Uh, but I think it's it's it can be really, really helpful just to have uh, one or two clients before you take the plunge just so you have that cushion of income for the first month because it's unlikely you're going to be earning lots. For me it kind of showed that I could earn money um, and it kind of acted as as kind of a benchmark for me to bounce up from. So those are the five things I would suggest uh, doing before you go freelance. Um, like I said some of the things I wish I'd done before um, and there's obviously a lot of other things that you could consider doing before you take the dive. But hopefully these will kind of put you on the right foot and show you that it is possible if you get your ducks in order beforehand. Um, if you have any other questions relating to freelance writing, the freelance lifestyle in general or travel, please leave a comment or email me or get in touch on social media and I'll do my best to answer all of your questions.